cold welding. It is a thing, and not just in the vacuum of space. It happens here on Earth in industry all the time. Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. We are firing on all cylinders today. While this thing chooches, we're gonna go in the room formerly known as the wife sewing, and we're gonna mess around with cold welding gold. Now, I gathered up the bits and bobs. We're gonna go 500, 800, 1,000, 1,200, 1,500, and 2,000 grit, and then crocus cloth. The abrasive on crocus cloth, of course, look at the color of it, is iron oxide rust. That should polish these up nicely. We have one gram each of fine gold. But you know what I'm saying? Sunshine minting. I'm wondering if this is something to do with the sunshine mine in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. As you'll recall, 1972, 92 miners, kilt right dead. The sunshine mine, I left you hanging there, so what happened? It was fire what killed all those guys. The engineers and the supervisors on surface, even the safety guys said impossible, cannot happen. What had happened was some urethane foam that was developed in 66 as a, an alternative to shot creating or, or concreting. Very flammable in certain instances, and uh, this stuff caught fire and killed 92 guys. The Dow Chemical Company, of course, uh, no fault whatsoever, but uh, them and a whole bunch of other manufacturers apparently settled out of court. But uh, no blame laid in that case. In It was uh, a product that was approved by the, the Mine Health Safety Bureau at the time. A long, short, and curly of it is uh, don't trust authority. Getting her closer. Now we're going to use shiny magazine paper. That sheen is actually kaolin clay. So little platelets of mineral that make the paper sheen. So we're going to polish it on that. Just a piece of shiny magazine paper. Now you wouldn't think that would do anything, but have a look at the paper. It's picking up. You can see it's picking up gold. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. There we go, we're going to ring them together. And they are sticking. Oh wow. Oh wow. Holy shit. They're, they feel like they're galling. Okay, we're going to leave that for a little bit. As we can see, plainly wrung together, the question is, will it cold weld? Now, this is a surprise to me. I didn't actually expect this to happen. We can plainly see the four or five spots that it cold welded, and then the subsequent galling as we dragged it apart. Cold welding. Gold in atmosphere. Not very clean either, just about as clean as our favorite libation can get it, which isn't very clean at all. Incredible. We're going to try this again. The 2000 grit is around 8 micron. and The crocus cloth just says fine, but I believe it's right around 3000. Big step here. Diamond paste, which is half a micron. We still got some big gouges in there, but it's very polished. To put it in perspective, half of my wall of human hair is four thou, which is a hundred microns. We just polished it with half a micron. And they are sticking. You can feel them galling up here. Okay, we're going to leave it like that until tomorrow, and then we'll see if we can get them apart. I have a feeling it happens instantly. It doesn't, well, maybe the grain, and maybe it grows together. Soon to find out. Well, we got two 3 8 fasteners, standard grade 8, high tensile strength, high carbon steel. It's a cat bolt. What's the difference between a cat branded bolt and a regular one? 
It's got a bigger head, what for giving it a little extra twist with the farmer wrench. As you can see, a little bit thicker, more meat there. Sometimes a pain in the ass when you get clearance and frankly, a little bit too expensive for that little bit of material you get extra. But anyway, pissing with the cock you got and so forth. This is 304 stainless, lots of chromium, lots of nickel. So what happens is this doesn't rust because the chromium forms a instantly forms an imperial, imperial impermeable oxide layer that prevents oxygen from getting at the iron and making it rust. We're going to clean these off with our favorite libation. Rum? No. <laughs> Brake clean. I've never been to Newfoundland. I should go sometime. Apparently you haven't had a proper rum and coke until you've been out in the boat and got some ice for your drink right off of an iceberg. Blue ice, millennia old. Got to try that sometime. Sounds pretty fucking cool to me. We'll slide on some spacers, Miss Moneypenny. And there's my nut. Let's pack that on. Oh, you mother. Fucking piece of fucking shit. That's fucking dead. Garbage! Why is it everything I own is fucking garbage? Okay, I got the cock for dolly now. And away. Nice and tight. Now, this one. Comes right off. I gotta nut this on. As you can see, she's pretty loosey goosey right down on the root of her thread. Come right out of the soft jaw there. Mangled her right to fuck. Now that is on there. Permanente. Cold welded. So what happened was it fretted that oxide layer, cold welded a section, and then when it tried to back it off, it galled up. So it's on there permanent. And this is a problem in industry, especially you see this with, with young fellas, uh, apprentices who don't know any better. They'll put together stainless steel, either 316 and say uh, some sort of pulp mill or some sort of chemical industry, you know, do, dealing with hot brine or whatever. Or they'll just put on 304 stainless, which is not as stainless as 316, but they'll put it on dry. And as soon as you torque it up, she's right fucking dickered. Oh, of course, it being stainless, you can't cut it with a torch, it won't cut. After you cut two, three, half dozen, one inch stainless steel fasteners by hand with a hacksaw, that is a lesson you will not soon forget. That's e very easily prevented. Little dab will do ya. The never sneeze. Even, in this case, even just some grease. Today is the morrow and that just came apart. You can see lots of cold welding marks and galling on there. It doesn't seem to be affected too, too much by well, at least the, the time frame that we're looking at, 24 hours. I think it either does it or it doesn't, like right away. I think it's instantaneous. When it wants to, it does. Now, there might be a time factor involved in mechanical vibration if these two were vibrating against each other. But as far as cold welding, it's pretty much instant. It's incredible the amount of torque that'll take. Oh, I'll get these cleaned up again, all packed up, sent off to Cody. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice.